Over the last couple of years, Apple has been doing quite a lot of work in developing their Reminders application, which is Apple's built-in to-do list. Now today I want to take you through some of the newer features that have come out over the last couple of years that can actually make Reminders a very useful tool. So let's get started. Now, first up, I'm going to actually suggest that you create your own inbox and call it inbox. Now, to be fair, it doesn't really matter because when we come to the next part, the next one, I will explain why it doesn't matter. But having an inbox just give you a place where you can just dump stuff fairly quickly. However, when you've set up an inbox, what you do need to do is you do need to go into settings and whether you're using your iPad or your iPhone or in this case, the Mac OS uh, 26, what you need to do then is just go into settings and then at the very top of your settings, you will see default list and make sure that that inbox or, or tasks or reminders are actually set as your default inbox. This is going to help you when you start using Siri, which is the second point, because when you use Siri to add tasks, you can just say, add X to my blah, to reminders or remind me to do mm, and what it will do is any of those tasks will automatically then drop into your inbox, which is superb because it's just the collection bucket, if you like. It's your inbox for stuff that you haven't processed. Okay, that was the first one and kind of the second one because quick entry, adding tasks, it's really quite simple while we're here on this one. All I need to do is just tap in here and add a task. In your phone or on your iPad, you just tap plus and, or again, you can probably just tap the screen and you can start typing your new task. So that's how you do adding tasks, really superb, very, very simple. Next up is what about those emails that have tasks contained within them? How do you get those into reminders? Well, the simple way to do it is just pick it and then just drag it into your reminders and drop it in. And you'll see now that I've got this particular webinar from, from Steve Dotto. And if I, just to show you, there's no magic involved here. All I need to do is just clear my, close my email. But you'll notice that as I drag that in there, I've got this here. So if I double tap on that, it opens up the original email and I can now just respond to it from there. Now, what I would suggest just from a productivity and time management point of view is you can now go in here and you can actually change this. So consider... I'm going to really spell consider joining Steve Dotto's web B. <laughs> web B. You get the idea. Uh, when I do that, you notice that uh, the mail is still there and I can change the task. I would always recommend changing the actual name of the task so that it's pretty clear what you need to do because if you don't, and in two weeks time, you'll think, what the hell is this? So make sure that you make the task very, very clear. So that's another way that you can get stuff into your inbox. Now, what about organizing your day? Well, let's have a look at that. Okay, this is a feature that I've only just recently noticed and it may have come out last year or perhaps the year before. But if you look at my list of things to do today, you'll notice that I've got morning, afternoon and tonight. Now, what I thought, well, what's the point of that? Because I've got my task, what's the point? And then I did a little bit of testing. So let's imagine that my actionable email is something that I want to do in the afternoon. I can now drag that into the afternoon session. I can say, complete my daily planning sequence. I'm going to do that tonight because I always do that in the evening. So I'm going to add that there. Water office plants, I'll do that this morning because I didn't do it. Uh, take out the garbage. Again, that's something that I would do tonight. Research new key light. Uh, I'm going to do that this afternoon and the one that I'm doing right now, which is the morning. So I'm just going to drag that into my morning. Now I've now organized my day into morning, afternoon and tonight. Now, one caveat with this one. Now that I've done that, you will notice particularly here that I've now got times associated with it. This means at 9 a.m. every morning, whatever I've actually put into my morning 
is going to pop up at 9 a.m. So basically from midnight until you start your day, these are going to be coming up as reminders on your home screen, which actually is not a bad thing if you, particularly if you've got ADHD and you need a little trigger to tell you, don't forget, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. This is a really good way of doing it. Now, one other caveat here is don't start putting tons and tons of stuff just in one. If you've got a day where you're pretty free and you can just get on with your work at your leisure, don't use this feature because you don't need all those extra notifications popping up. You've got your list, just work your way down it. But if your day is a bit tight and you've got lots of meetings in the afternoon, so you may have just an hour free in the afternoon, perhaps then you just have one task in there and move out the task to the morning or the evening. Entirely up to you. But it's a really quick way of assigning times to your task. Now, just for those of you who are just curious, the afternoon will come up at 3 p.m. and the evening will come up at, four, at 6 p.m. So if you just want a, a, an idea of when you're going to get reminded, mornings is going to be 9 a.m., afternoons is going to be 3 p.m. and tonight is going to be 6 p.m. Okay, let's move on to another one that many people ask me about. And that is, how do you get your project notes linked to Apple Reminders. Now, this is all in the share sheet. Now, but first, what we need to do, now, there is a couple of ways of doing this. I can, you can go into your share sheet up here, you can assign it to yourself, collaborate with yourself. It's a very complicated way of doing it. But as many people have pointed out on my YouTube videos before, there is a really easy way to do it. So down here in my project note, I have got my next actions list. These are the tasks that I have still got to do on this particular project. So let me just say, I'm going to highlight this particular task because this is the very next one that I need to do. If I then right click on it, you'll see that I've got share. If I tap share now, I can send that to my reminders. Now it's going to give me a few options, but because I've set up my inbox, I can just add that straight into there. Now, everything I'm doing on here can be done on your iPad, on your iPhone, you just click the share sheet, you just highlight your text and then just tap it. And then if you just scroll along, you'll find share and then you can do the same thing. Now, if I close that down now and reopen my reminders, in my inbox, you will see that now I've got this one, 25, 2025 Ultimate Productivity Workshop. And then down at the bottom, so what it's doing is it's telling me the name of the project, which is great because I don't need to add anything else. And then in the notes, I've got Review Speaker Notes. And again, if I just double tap on that or just tap on it, it opens up my, my project note. So it's all there. So that's another way that you can actually get stuff into reminders, but it's also the quickest way to connect a project note where you keep all your project details to your reminders. A really simple, super way of setting that up. Now, in your calendar, you do have the option to show your reminders or not. But there's a few things that you probably need to be aware of. First of all, to turn that on, if you go to your side menu here, you can just tap on the little button next to scheduled reminders, tap on that, and you'll see that now all my reminders have arrived in my this week. Now, I've not got a lot of things in reminders, so it doesn't quite look as overwhelming as it potentially could do. Now, there are a couple of caveats here. For example, this is a recurring task. So if I now try and drag that down anywhere I want in here, it's not going to work. The other one is I've actually added, if you remember in my reminders, you'll notice that I have, we will just go back into reminders, uh, reminders. If I go back into reminders, you'll notice that for today, I have water office plants and it's coming up at 9 a.m. So you'll notice that it's now here. It's showing up at 9 a.m also water office plants. And you've got my record YouTube videos around coming up for next week as well. Nothing I can do with that now because it's a recurring task. I cannot move it around. The only ones that you can move around are the ones that are non-task uh, based. Now, the good news is, let's just say I did water my plant this morning. I can check it off from here, but I can't. That's the problem. I now have to go back to my um, 
my reminders. So I don't find this particularly useful. You can see down here that all those ones that I've added times to are now showing up, but I, this one like research new key light, for example, well, I would like to do it in the afternoon, three o'clock, but I've actually got a meeting with Lucy Taylor at that time. So I cannot do it at that time. And so maybe I can move it, but I cannot move it. This is the bit of, it gets very frustrating. But this is a way of showing you what your tasks are uh, if you wish to see them. But I don't, I don't find it very useful. I, I like to keep it, my calendar really clear. A task is something that I can, oops, I've got scheduled around, it's still on, turn them off. What I like to be able to do is reminders to me is a task and the task can be done at any time in the day. So reminders, just having, just having reminders split this way, it gives me a rough guideline of when I can do it. But you know, does it matter that I water the office plant exactly at 9 a.m.? Of course not. I could do it at 10.30. I could do it at 12. It really, really doesn't matter. And that's what tasks are. They can be done at any time in the day. So you don't really need to have them also on your calendar. But I do know some of you do like to do it that way and that's perfectly fine. If it works for you, then fantastic. It's never worked for me, which is why I don't really like to add tasks to my calendar. Now, one final task that I want to show you, let's just go back to my inbox. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new task and I'm gonna say, um, just to <laughs> write journal. Let's just give a, because what I want to do is show you how to set up a recurring task. And again, remember, all you need to do to set these up is just go into the information button and there you get a lot of additional tasks, or a lot of additional information. So what I want to do with writing my journal is starting today, which is the 1st of October, I want to write 10 minutes for a journal. I, again, this is a task, so it doesn't want to be going in my calendar. But let's just imagine that I want to, if I want to do this daily, then I would just tap on here daily and now it will set to repeat daily. Now for me, something like that is going to be a routine. You could argue it's a recurring critical task, but to me it's a routine, so it's just going to my routines folder. And that's it, that's all I need to do. And now that's set up. If I just tap out of that, that's gonna disappear. You'll see now that it's gone into my journal. Now this is daily. And it's something else I want to show you while I'm here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that into my daily, which is right there. And now that's set up something that's come up. Now this is something that you may or may not wish to set up. All you need to do, these are just sections. And if you go up to the top here, you can see that add a new section. So you could, I could just add a new section here and call that, I'm going to say annual. <laughs> uh, I was going to say annual, an you will, um, and then just hit return. And now I can actually have tasks in there. Now you don't have to do this. I just like to do this because it does help to avoid any overwhelm, it gives me a clear session. So let's just say I'm reviewing these. I can just close these sections down so they don't look overwhelming. But it's entirely up to you if you wish to use the sections, but they are really quite useful. You can also change this then to a, uh, a, a a view, a different view. So you can use this in a column view. So I can set up as columns. And if I, and so you can now see what I've got daily, weekly, annual. I'm a list person. You may prefer to see this as a column. It's entirely up to you. You just use the file menu and you can change it. But that's just something else that you want to do. Now, what about if I had a, um, <clears throat> if I had a task that just needs to be done uh, on the 25th of every month. Now, this one's going to be, so let's just say it has to be done on a Wednesday. So it's a weekly task. I'm just going to put this in here and it's going to be something along the lines of, um, let's just say, send sales figures to boss. Okay, now this one's an interesting one because it has to be done every, let's just say every Friday. So again, I'm going to add the date. So I'm going to add date and I can change that to Friday. So if I just tap on, there we go, we've got the menu. So there we go, tap on the 3rd of October will be the first, repeat. Now, if you set this up uh, weekly, what's gonna happen is if you don't send it on Friday in one week, what will happen is it will then be Saturday and then Sunday and the recurrence will change all the way through. 
What you want to do is go down to custom. Now you will need to change the frequency to weekly and then you get the option. And I'm going to put Friday, so it's tapped there, so that it comes up every single Friday, not weekly. Weekly just means the last time you've done it and then seven days in the future. And that can cause people a lot of confusion. Just make sure that when you do it, you set it up so that it's coming up every Friday because that's the deadline. So there you go. That's just a run through of some of my favorite features in Reminders. It's a really solid app today. And although my only criticism is on the Mac, you cannot change the text size. And as you probably noticed, the text size is too small. However, on your phone, on your iPad, it is superb. And because a lot of people are caught up in the, the Windows ecosystem at work, running this on your iPad is a superb way of managing your day and you can do things there. Now there are other things in here, you'll notice I've got tags and stuff like that. That's for another video. But for now, this is just some of the basics, some of the stuff I really like about Reminders and why I think if you're looking for a simple, easy to use task manager, then Apple Reminders is definitely one to consider. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about how I've got my iCloud set up in iOS 24, Six and macOS 26, then this video up here is probably the one you want to watch next.